Awesome. Good morning, Margaret. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you, Alicia? I am good to see you. Well, it's good to see you as well. I'm saying good morning, but um, I'm tuned in from the East Coast. So what is that? Good afternoon? <laughs> well, it's right on the dot, right at noon right now. Right. So you're kind of, you're right either way, whether you say morning or afternoon. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Um, I know we have a lot of people that are tuned in from the Central Time, so I'll tell them good morning. <laughs> Great. I think we have a great group of people joining us today from what I've heard from all over. Exactly. Exactly. Looking forward to that. And so you said this, well, this morning you said you weren't, were not able to um, attend a Zoom. I thought you were saying that you had went to one already, but you hadn't had a chance to attend one this morning. That's right. I'm going to be, yeah. Yeah. I want to make sure I was all set for you guys here today at noon so we can talk to your 100 plus people and guests that are on this uh, on this webinar today. Exactly. And I just want to remind everyone that we want this to be super interactive. And so definitely blow up the chats with thumbs up and emojis and smiling faces. We want to hear from you. We want to hear your questions. So do not hesitate at all um, to, to drop things into the chat. We want this to be super interactive. Yeah, I'm um, glad you mentioned that, Alicia, because I love to do Q&A, really. Yeah. I, I like to get to the heart of where people's challenges are around this, uh, around this topic. So that exactly. will be great. Exactly. And I know some people might hop in and say, who is this? Where is Savitra? My name is Alaysia Brown and I'm Resilia's community manager. I'm super ex excited to be speaking with you all with Margaret to learn all about getting grant funding. So Savitra could not be here, but I promise you are in great hands. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed my talk with Savitra not too long ago. Uh, we were chatting and just learning about each other's work and finding there's this incredible synergy between what we do. And that's why she invited me today on this on this show. So I'm really excited and uh, I'll catch up with her again later. I know she had something she had to attend to immediately. Yeah. But uh, this is a nice opportunity to meet you too, Alasia. Exactly. So we'll have some fun this next hour. Yeah, absolutely. I was telling you before we hopped on, I was able to dive into your course, um, into your website. And as I was going through all of the amazing links and you know education and knowledge that you had, I was like, well, I wasn't planning on writing a grant, but now with all of this help and support, I might be leaning towards it. Yes, you should. It would, it would be very helpful. Yeah. Um, I'm just seeing a comment here just before we get started. It looks like we're waiting for a few more people to join. Uh, someone had mentioned that the allaboutgrantwriting.com site isn't working, and I will be referring to that quite frequently. Um, I have seen it, it's working on my um, phone at the moment. I would say just keep trying in. There have been some internet glitches this morning of all times, right? Um, if you don't mind, keep trying it and, and see how that goes. Absolutely. There we go. Oh, it just worked for Sarah. Yeah, exactly. HTTPS. Got to do the old fashioned. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Awesome. And so we're about three minutes in. Carrie gave us a thumbs up. So it looks like we're working, which is amazing. Um, we're about three minutes in. So I say let's go ahead and get started. Um, as people are trickling in, I just wanted to introduce myself one more time. Um, my name is Alasia Brown, and I am the community manager at Resilia. Here at Resilia, we are empowering the people, changing the world. And we're so excited that you're able to join us for office hours, where we meet with nonprofits leaders and operational leaders um, where they just come here to share actionable advice on how to increase your impact. And so today we are joined by Margit Brasda Poirier. I'm so excited to have you here with us. Um, and I just have to get into your bio before we get into the questions because you have accomplished so many amazing things. And so it's only a fair that I, I read off of that list. Um, and so Margaret Brasda Poirier is the owner and founder of Grants for Good. Um, Margaret created the company in 2009 to help nonprofit organizations and businesses find and get grant funding. She is one of only 350 nationally certified grant professionals and one of only 20 approved trainers in the US. Margaret and her team have written and received millions in grants 
from government and foundations. And she has a very unique perspective of understanding both grant seeking and grant making, given her experience leading a prominent New York foundation. Um, Margaret's passion is teaching others about the power of grants through her online course, all about grantwriting.com. Welcome, 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 Margaret. To Thank Resort you. Hours. Thank you, Elijah. I'm really excited to be here. As you know, as I was saying earlier, um, I connected with Savitra uh, quite a few weeks ago, and we were so excited to find out we had our missions overlap. They were similar. Uh, our our passion is to help nonprofits achieve their mission. That's why we do the work we do. So I'm really excited to be here because we just do it a little bit differently. My focus is completely on helping uh, nonprofits and businesses get the grant funding they need to achieve their mission. So, yeah. so yeah, I'm happy to be here. Thanks. You know, we're so excited to have you. And I'm just going to jump right in because I know you have so much knowledge to share with us. Um, so, Margaret, you've served on both sides of the aisle in the grant making space. You've awarded millions in grants as a funder and you've written and supported even more grant funding for nonprofits. Can you tell us more about your history in the space and how you came to found Grants for Good? I would be glad to. And I'll, I'll keep it short because, you know, you can always talk forever about your history, especially when you're, oh, I don't know, over age 30, which I am. <laughs> so I'm going to keep it short. But let me tell viewers here that I did not grow up saying I want to be a grant professional when I get older. <laughs> That's not how it worked. I got in totally by accident. So my master's degree is actually in, uh, I have a master's of science in natural resource management. And I started writing grants because I worked for our local county planning department and health department doing environmental work and alternative energy work. And what I found was that there were budget cuts, there wasn't enough money, and I just started teaching myself how to write grants. Now, this was the early 90s. I didn't have webinars, okay? I didn't have um, online courses like I've developed now. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm, I'm balling together 20 years of experience into an online course and into all my webinars that I teach. But that's what got me started in grant writing. Now, fast forward many years forward where we adopted a, a little baby boy and realized, you know, I kind of need to be home more. Yeah. So I had been working for a foundation as an executive director for several years. So I learned what it was like to give out grants, to be on the other side of that. And when I decided to be home, I just started my own business kind of naturally because nonprofits came to me and said, Margaret, you know, we know you worked for a, you know, a big New York foundation. Can you help us develop mm -hmm. these grant proposals? Can you help us find other sources of funding? And that led to Grants for Good. And now we're uh, 11 years later and working with thousands of clients all throughout the country. And it's it's just been very rewarding. But the reason I tell you that I didn't learn, that I didn't intend to enter this field is because everyone watching today, everybody listening can do this. You all can do this. So if you're here and you're saying, oh my God, I need grant funding. I don't even know where to start. You can do it because it wasn't something I learned in college or anywhere else in formal education. Right. No, that's super exciting. And I see Chastity in the chat. She's like, I'm so excited to learn more about this. Um, yeah. and so I just want to jump into something that you said on LinkedIn that I, I thought was super interesting. Um, so on LinkedIn, you recently mentioned, and also, like I said, this is super interactive. So for all the attendees, get ready to type in the chat. Um, but on LinkedIn, you recently mentioned the top three answers you get when you ask the question, what is your biggest challenge related mm -hmm. to grants? And so I posed the question to our attendees and I, I wanna hear this answer from you in the chat. What is your biggest challenge related to grants? Um, so feel free to answer that question. And Margaret, as the attendees are answering this question, can you let us know the top three answers that you usually get when you ask sure. that question? And can you also offer the feedback um, that you give when, when you answer this question? Yeah, I'd be glad to. So, you know, as a business owner of, of Grants for Good and with my mission to help nonprofits and businesses, I want to learn from, from my people, from my audience. What are they thinking? What are their biggest challenges? So I ask. And uh, just as recent as this past summer, I asked everybody who is on my email list and in my Get the Grant Facebook group, I said, what is your biggest challenge with obtaining grant funding for your organization? And I took all the results, we tabulated them all, and I'll tell you, I boiled it down to three. 
And the very first one, I would say the number one was, I'm a newbie. I don't even know where to start. I've heard there's grants out there. I don't know where to start. Um, and so for that, what I recommend is I, I have a cure for that. <laughs> and the cure is um, I have a 10, uh, it's a short 10 page guide and it's called seven steps to grant success. And what it does is it boils down in seven steps, what you need to get started, how you can possibly be ready to start to get grant funding. I know that um, uh, I think Will is going to put up a link on that. You can obtain and download that free guide if you like right now or after the call. It is at my company's website, grantsforgood.com. So it's grants, the number four, good.com. But what that guide will tell you is that one of the most important things is to know that you are eligible for grant funding. And I talk all about what it means to be eligible. For the most part, though, you have to be a 501c3 nonprofit or a business. Secondly, um, and I'm going to paraphrase these and not go through all seven, but you also want to make sure that you have a very specific project or item where you need funding and you have to have all the details worked out on exactly what you need funding for, what you will be doing with the money and what the ultimate outcomes, what, what is the end goal of the funding? Because mm -hmm. I can tell you a secret, funders aren't interested in buying you a van or more staff or personnel, which they will do. Grants are for that. But what they want to know is what has changed as a result of their funding. In other words, let's say you are working with a K through 12 school system that has a high rate of high school dropout and you need to do an in-house mentoring program or you want to contract with someone for mentoring then your outcome is really how is, is keeping kids in school and graduating. Or maybe you're helping them become career ready. That is now your outcome. That's what grabs the interest of funders. So that's a really key important point. Mm -hmm. And then the third thing is really knowing um, how to find funders and how to develop your grant proposal. So you can download that guide. And I see that it's popped up right here, um, free grant writing guide. It's called Seven Steps to Grant Success. What that will also do is allow you to get into my email list, and then you'll hear about future webinars, and you'll just get regular tips on my blog and things that I'm posting. So I would love to see you in my audience. I'd love to get to know you all more. Um, now, the second most common thing is um, the second most common thing is really how to find the best funders. Now I call this group the detectives and, and we are all detectives. Okay. And this is why I love doing this work is you have to be curious. Mm -hmm. You have to say how many different ways can I research and find the best possible foundations, um, whether it's private foundations, community foundations, corporate foundations, how can I find state grants, federal grants? You have to know what your research tools are, your techniques and some of the database sources that you can use for free. And so some of those are in my guide, and I definitely talk a lot about those in upcoming webinars and also in my, my online course. So the detectives is the next big group. These are people who say to me, Margaret, my biggest challenge is I don't even know where to look for funding sources. So it's my goal to help them find that. And the third really is, the third one's kind of an interesting group, and maybe some of you on this call are part of this group, is maybe you are tasked with finding grants from your board of directors or from a supervisor. And it's really hard to work internally to get all of your staff on board because I'll tell you something, you can't do this alone. Finding and getting grants is definitely a team effort. So you need a team of people. And in my guide, if you download that, you'll see what kind of people I think you should have on your team. They're gonna help you have that success. Um, so really that third category is the people that are struggling within their organization and educating the people around them to say, look, here's what the grant process is. It's not just a matter of calling Oprah Winfrey and saying, hey, Oprah, I heard you give out grants, you know, <laughs> or contacting uh, Virgin Airlines or, or Bill Gates, you know, for, for money. No, it doesn't work that well. I wish it did. But there really is a process. Awesome. And so what is that? Three different groups, the newbies, yep. the detectives, and the people who need people. I call them the saints <laughs> because they even try to pull everything together. Okay. I love <laughs> they that. Earn cats and get people together and really get it all organized. That is um, but all, all three of those are, 
are so easy to overcome. And I say it's easy only because I've been doing it for decades. And, and I literally lay out a step-by-step -step process of how to do that in my All About Grant Writing course. Because the last thing people need is to try to piecemeal together all different kinds of training. And there's lots of free training out there. Um, but you have to piecemeal it together. So what I like to do, because I'm a pretty structured person being a, a, a science major, mm -hmm. and I like to structure together exactly the steps you need to go from planning your project, getting your team ready, the research tools you need to find your funding sources. And then here's the biggie. How do you put your grant proposal together so that it stands out above all the competition? Because it's pretty fierce out there. Right. So within my course is actually a seven day plan to do exactly that. Awesome. And that is actually a really good segue into the next question that I wanted to ask. I wanted to start, though, by saying congratulations on the release of your new online course, All About Grant Writing. Um, we know it was created to help nonprofits find and get the grant funding they need. Um, so it's an eight module program. And in your first module, you talk through the prep work. Um, a question I'm sure many of our attendees have is what does the prep work look like? What steps should one take to, success, to successfully excuse me, prepare to write a grant? Good question. Um, so, Alasia, before I, I get into that, I have a, a quick technical question. I'm seeing the uh, get the free grant writing guide, which is great. You know, keep that up there if you like. But it's right in front of my uh, camera or my view. Can you still see me on the? I can still see you. Okay. I was able to exit out of that. And so if you see a little X, okay. feel free to click it. <laughs> OK, great. Um, I, I don't see that. But um, oh, here we go. There's a close. All right. Now I can see you and me, which is much better. <laughs> you know, if we can't be in person. It's nice that we can at least see each other. I feel like we're going to know each other this way. And uh, I'm so eager to hear from from our listeners too. Um, in in fact, I see oh I see uh, Nidia is saying having a hard time finding arts grants. Oh my God, great question. I I work with a lot of arts organizations, and mm -hmm. there there is money out there for arts grants, definitely. Um, and I'm also seeing another question by Marsha, figuring out the priority because there are different deadlines for every grant, especially if it's a large grant. That is absolutely true, Marsha. Um, Charlene is saying developing a program. So what are some of the next steps? Uh, first and foremost, it's really important to get help. Now you can do that. You can hire a grant professional like me, but I'm not here to sell my grant professional services, but you can work with a grant professional. It's just, you'll need more of a budget to do that. Um, what I recommend in the immediate future is to get training because no matter what you want to understand what the grant process is. If you do decide to hire a development director or a grant professional to work with you, you want to make the best use of your resources. And so it helps if you have a leg up and you already know what to expect in the grant writing process so that you can move forward much quicker with that person. Um, and so for that, again, download my seven step guide. But what I'd like you to start with is, is read through that and it's going to help you start to get your team together and plan your projects. Now, one thing I would recommend doing right away is look at all the things in your organization, all the high priority projects that you have. And you might say, well, everything's a high priority. You know, everything we do is important. It all needs funding. And most of all, we need general operating funding, which general operating funding is basically the gift. It's, it's you know, a 10 or $20,000 or 100,000 grant that says here, use this to your best and highest purpose to achieve your mission. And that money is out there. It's not as common as specific project funding. And I talk about budgets a lot in my course because that's a sticking point that people have. But I would say e even without the course right now, list out your priority projects and try to pick one that you want to focus on. Mm -hmm. So let's say you want to hone in. I'll use the same example because I work with a, with Big Brothers Big Sisters. You you know, let's say you're looking to have a mentoring program in your school district. So start looking for funders for that mentoring program. Now, before you even know how to research and find funders, I can tell you, you can start to look up or even just Google funding for mentoring programs. It's a start. It's not the best way, but it is at least a start of, of how to get to some of the foundations out there. And I'll tell you just quickly, there's basically three categories of funders. There's the private foundations and there's 87,000 
private foundations in the US alone. So if somebody says there's no money out there, don't believe them. There's 87,000 grant making foundations. They include everything from the largest, like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, to really small family foundations that you never would have heard of. Now, of those, only a tiny fraction is going to be interested in, you know, your program of mentoring a specific K through 12 school district in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Okay, <laughs> so you're not going to be going right to the Gates Foundation for that. You may look to some local foundations, which I recommend people starting there first and then build up your reputation for getting funding and go after some of the bigger ones too. Um, for federal grants, you know, grants.gov is, is the best site, grants.gov. And, and you'll see that in my, in my free guide. You'll see some of those listed out that you can start to research right away. And again, the third thing is really right in, in line with those three challenges we talked about. Mm -hmm. The third thing is get other people on your team. So get people internally to work with you on this grant process and see if there's any outside partners. Maybe there's a business you want to partner with or another nonprofit you want to partner with. And um, yeah, those uh, that's how I'm going to boil it down into, into three key things you can do now. I don't overwhelm. But keep in mind there is money out there. Mm -hmm. there, there's private foundation money, there's corporate foundation money, and there is governmental grants, state and federal grants. Amazing. Awesome. So once we've completed that step, once we began with the prep work, what happens next? What should high performing nonprofits consider when preparing a proposal? Um, can you repeat that? I had a, a little bit of a freeze just there on your sound, Alicia. Absolutely. Can you hear me a little bit better now? Yep. Awesome. So once we've completed that prep work, what happens next? What should high performing nonprofits consider when preparing proposals? So nonprofit, I like that you said high performing nonprofits, <laughs> what they should consider when preparing proposals. I'm going to just reiter reiterate something I said earlier. The number one thing you need to consider is how your work impacts your target audience. Mm -hmm. So I would challenge you on this call or directly afterwards, take a blank sheet of paper and just quickly scribble down some key points that describe your target audience because that is who your funder is interested in. Now, too often I'll get a phone call saying, Margaret, we need your help right away. We have to raise $100,000 by the end of the year or we have to lay off staff. Well, I understand those challenges because right now, nonprofits are really, really struggling to keep the doors open. And I wanna say two things, first and foremost, just getting money to have staff isn't going to cut it. You have to have something to wrap it around. You have to have a program that has a big impact on your community. Funders are interested in how you're going to change the life of people in your target population or how you're going to change your community. Or if you're in the environmental field as I was for many years, how you're gonna improve air quality or water quality or the life of animals in an animal shelter. You have to tie it to a specific outcome. So that's a real key thing. And an exercise I have people do in my online course, and I, I review these with them, is I want to make sure they have a very specific target audience defined and described so that when I'm reading your grant proposal, I can completely picture who you're helping. Maybe you're helping adolescent youth that live in high poverty neighborhoods of Northeast Rochester, New York, and I'm in Rochester. Mm -hmm that are at high risk of dropout due to living in a single family household, having a parent incarcerated or involved in substance abuse. Now that's pretty specific, right? You've got the age, the location, you have their, um, you have what kind of challenges they're affected by in life and you can picture who it is we're working with in this project. So that's how much I want you to dial that down. Right. And I love that in all of my note takers, this is where I need you to get the pen out, to get the notepad out. Can you repeat that exercise one more time? Because I think it's super valuable um, and it's something that you can act on immediately. It is. Yeah, I'd like I, I would challenge you to define your target audience and define them according to their demographic. Mm -hmm. So their age, their race or ethnicity. Uh, define them according to their geographic location. Define them according to any kind of interests they have, as well as any kind of specific challenges or problems that they're facing. 
because just like starting a business, you have to have a very target market. If your market or, or your community that you're helping is everyone, then you're probably helping no one. And, and I know I used to get so annoyed when people told me that, but it's the truth. You want to dial it down very specifically. You can always broaden your scope later on, but you want to get funding and show the funder you're having a very specific impact on a specific audience. Right. That's super helpful, Margaret. And I always love a good story. I also love a good what not to do story. And so I just asked you what should high performing nonprofits consider mm -hmm. when preparing a proposal? What should someone not do? when preparing a proposal has do you have any examples of clients coming to you saying margaret i have my proposal completed it's amazing and you look at it and you're like do not submit this to anyone yeah <laughs> yep <laughs> well i can tell you you know alicia I, it, that's funny because you know i i one of my services is i will review people's grants mm -hmm. and um I find that the, the grant itself has to be so clear and concise. So the last thing funders want to do is read 100 pages of a proposal or, or even 30 pages. So the key thing you do have to do is follow the guidelines. So that's called the guidelines or the request for proposals. And every foundation has specific guidelines you have to follow. Unfortunately, they're all a little bit different. So yes, it requires a little more research. But I found that after decades of doing this work, there are some really key things you have to write and be familiar with and and again those are all outlined um some of those are in that 10 page guide also that you can download we definitely go through them in great detail and all about grantwriting.com but it's important to have the the proposal written concisely mm -hmm. and and always go back to the impact you're making on your target audience uh, now the other thing you want to be aware of is your budget and this is a real sticking point is you have to have a specific project budget. List all your expenses, everything you can think of that you need for a project budget, and then where you're gonna anticipate your revenue comes from, a portion of which should come from grants. So here's a big don't do. Don't expect a funder to fund 100% of your project. You have to allocate some money from maybe your fundraising events or your individual donors, your annual appeals, other sources other than grants. But at the same time, don't overlook grants. And I often get a, a call from nonprofits saying, and business saying that, you know, here's the example again, we need $100,000 by the end of the year. Well, if you look on your calendar, you know it's October. And, and I have to check my calendar because this year has been really weird. Right. So I have to remind myself where we are here. Um, and you have to realize that when you submit a grant, let's say you and I just wrote a grant, Alicia, it's absolutely perfect. We're gonna submit it to the funder that's an absolute best fit for our program. Now, guess what? We're gonna wait three to six months to hear back whether or not we got the grant. Wow. So, so here's a big exclamation point for everybody listening is plan ahead. Yeah. I can't say this often enough, plan ahead. Because um, you know, if we submit something in October, if we're lucky, we'll hear by the end of December and have money for our next fiscal year. But most likely it may take into 2021. And that's why I want to talk about, you know, getting you prepared now because 2020 was not a great year for too many people. Okay. <laughs> Let's just put that out there. It was hard. It was hard for people personally. It was hard for businesses. It was really hard for nonprofits. Yeah. So I want to be there to make next year better for you. And, and that's why I'm launching this course right now. Um, maybe, maybe now's the time to tell people that, Finances are tough, so I'm offering a discount to everybody who's taking the time to be here with us, and I'm offering $100 off of the course, and I, I know uh, Will will probably get a coupon code up there. The coupon code is today, so I want you to buy the course today. 100 is your coupon course. Yeah. It's at allaboutgrantwriting.com, and the reason I'm doing this is I know how long it takes to get grant funding it's kind of a, a mystery to a lot of people. Frankly, it's intimidating to a lot of people. Yeah. It doesn't have to be. So I did this step-by-step -step process and really I make it fun. You know why? Because I have fun doing that. And the reason it's kind of fun is because here's, here's all that a grant really is. It's just a well-planned project put into writing. That's it. But that planning process, there's some some little tricks and tips there that I can share that make it appealing to the funders. 
And for me, in my heart, my mission, you know, I, I, I know I'm talking a lot about the, the logistics of grant writing and maybe you can hear the passion <laughs> behind what I'm doing. But really what fuels me is seeing other people get the results and improve their community. And it's always fueled me. But this year, more than ever, given all that's going on in our world, and I don't even know which issue you want to pick, there's so much going on. Yeah. There's so much opportunity to improve the lives of people in your community right now. And, and so the more people that we can help do this, wow, the better. Absolutely. And I just want to echo Margaret in saying, click on the link, bookmark it, save it to view as soon as this, um, as soon as this chat is over with. Um, but I, I've, d I've dove into the course and it is so ridiculously helpful. Um, so I just encourage everyone to take advantage of the discount um, that Margaret is giving our attendees. Thank you. And, you know, if people have questions after, they can, um, they can contact me too. My, um, I should type my email in the box, uh, or maybe Will can do that. It's Margit, M-A-R-G-I-T, at grantsforgood.com if you have questions still about the course Absolutely. after we're done here. Or we can just address them right here, you know, at when we have the Q&A at the end. Exactly. And so, yeah, that's a good reminder to get your questions prepared, get ready to drop them in the chat, because we're going to have Q&A as soon as we wrap the conversation. Um, and so just to keep things moving, Margit, once we've done all of this work that you just talked about and we get the grant funding and we pop off our favorite bottle of apple cider, what <laughs> happens next? How do we maintain the relationship? What makes for a productive and strong grantor-grantee relationship? Yeah, that's a good question because we've been talking a lot about developing the grant proposal, developing the budget. And really, here's my ideal situation for my clients, is that by the time we get to writing the grant and submitting it, we've already got a foot in the door and we've already got a pretty good idea that they're gonna like what we do. Mm -hmm. Now, the way we get to that point is, first of all, researching the best funders, which we talked about already. Secondly, contacting the funder. This is something that so many people miss. I missed it when I started. When I started this work in the 90s, I thought, well, I don't want to call the funder. I don't want to be a, a pest. I don't want to be a pain to them. What if I say the wrong thing? I just want to get, you know, do the polite thing, write the nice grant application, send it in. Well, wrong. <laughs> That's not what I want you to do. Learn from my mistake. The best thing is to find someone to contact, research their research the funder's website, um, research all their past giving that they've done, and then contact them to introduce yourself and literally give a, a two minute intro of what you do. And this is great time. I have a blog, by the way, on grantsforgood.com that I just published called How to Say It in 20 Seconds or Less. I'm gonna help you with that value proposition or elevator speech as it's called when you contact that funder. So check that article out. There's a formula right there. Um, but it's important to contact them first. Otherwise, you will not stand out among the hundreds or thousands of grant applications that they receive every year. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you how stiff the competition is. Honestly, it wasn't as bad in the 90s. There's a lot of people out there right now vying for grant funds. So that's why it's important to find the best funder, contact them, and then have a really competitive grant proposal that you submit to them. I love that. And that's so helpful, Margaret. Um, and I'm looking in the chat right now. Wilton just dropped Margaret's email. And so definitely reach out to her. Um, he also dropped the how to say it in 20 seconds or less blog post. So definitely look into that. Um, and so just a couple more questions, Margaret. Um, since March, many funders have changed their priorities. We've seen new COVID funds, special so social justice awards, and new commitments to racial equity. Is this changing the grant field? Um, yeah. yeah, and how can nonprofits adjust to new priorities and opportunities? I'm, I'm really glad you asked this because, mm -hmm. as I said before, 2020 has been such a different year. Now, I say it's probably the best year to apply for grant funds. I, I'm thinking if there was ever a time, it is now. It, it was yesterday, but it's now, it's tomorrow. Just hop on it fast. There is a ton of funding out there for organizations specifically who are impacted by COVID. Now, I, I think most of our listeners, viewers are probably aware of the SBA grant, Small Business Administration for Paychecks Protection Program. A lot of businesses, nonprofits took advantage of that. 
that funding has run out as of last August. Mm. Um, I don't know what the federal government will do with stimulus, but I wouldn't count solely on that. And that's why I think now is the time to supplement your revenue stream with grants from private foundations, corporate foundations, and state and federal grant funding. So this is perfect timing to do that. Now, a lot of my clients have applied for and received money that for COVID-19, which can be anything from purchasing PPE equipment to retrofitting their schools, their workplaces, so that they're safer for having people in or having guests and visitors. Some of my clients um, have received a lot of money for really addressing the racial divide, the structural racism that is finally a, a, a little bit late, finally coming to light. Mm -hmm. And I've also had clients that say, well, Margaret, you know, we don't fit into either one of those. And I would challenge you to think about that maybe you do, because I think there's always room for improvement for bridging that racial divide and having more racial equity in how you conduct business. There's always room for improvement there. And so you may qualify for some of the grants that are out there. I would also say that you probably qualify for some of the grants that are affected, um, where you're affected by COVID-19 because pretty much everybody is. Right. Um, if you still don't fall into any of those two, no worries because there's tons of other work out there. Um, I, I'm gonna go to that arts organization. I know we have someone on a call here that's having trouble finding funding for arts. Now that's a real challenge because how does that fit into either one? Mm. Well, I'll give you an example. And I work with um, a Fringe Festival, which is a big multidisciplinary presenting arts festival in Rochester, New York, but there's also ones throughout the country. They've done two key things. They received COVID funding to make their in-person festival in 2021 safer because we're already planning ahead. That's how far we plan ahead into 2021 September. They received that money. They also this year had some round tables about how to get more artists of color doing their own productions, becoming national artists and productions. So it's master classes to help really promote artists of colors that have been underrepresented in the past. And so that work is continuing too. So even in the arts, I, I feel like there's a ton of opportunity to, to meet those two things, those two criteria that you just described, where there's a lot of grant funding right now. Absolutely. So it's very timely. Yeah. And Alston and Erica, don't go anywhere. We're going to get to your question. We see it in the chat. We have one final question from Margaret for Margaret on our end. Um, and then we're going to dive into q and I'm so excited for, for that portion. Me too. Um, <laughs> so final question from our end, Margaret. You're speaking soon at the annual Grant Professionals Association Conference on the topic, what to do when the grant funds end. Can you give us a bit of background on what inspired that session topic? With everything going on right now in the economy and throughout the country, are funders less likely to renew grant funding? Yeah, I'd be glad. There's a couple questions there. Let me, if, if I don't answer them, I'll remind me. So, okay. are, um, okay. so um, yes, I will be speaking in early November. Uh, the Grant Professional Association is, Oh gosh, there's already 900 people registered for the conference. It was supposed to be in Denver, Colorado this year. It rotates throughout the US, um, but of course we're doing it all virtual. So if you wanna register, you can you can check that out. Um, it, it is in my Facebook group, I talk about it, which I'll give you a link to that too in a moment. But um, so the, the professional conference, I've, I've spoken at many times. This year I wanna talk about the, beyond the sustainability question and what to do when the grant funds end. Now, here's why I'm doing that. Grants themselves, I've got good news, bad news here. <laughs> okay, bad news first. Grants themselves are not sustainable. So let's say you and I, Elasia, we're submitting that awesome grant again. Okay, we've got the perfect funder and in about three months, let's say at the end of December, we hear from them, we got the money. We got $50,000 to spend. We have to spend it in 12 months. After that, the money is gone. So they're not sustainable in and of themselves. That's why for me and for my clients, I always promote a strategy where you make sure, I'll summarize it, you make sure you get at least two grants out the door every month because when one runs out, the next one's coming in. So 
we work pretty hard to consistently get those grants out the door. And in my course all about grant writing, I talk about how to do that because I want you to have a constant pipeline of money flowing into the door so that you don't get to the end of 12 months and panic and say, okay, what do we do for next year? You know, how do we, how do we renew this? And the good news is I have found that a lot of funders, once they really believe in what you're doing and they see your results from their first round of grant funding, You'll have to apply again, but they often support you for many years in a row. So that's the best news. That's the good news, right? You, you will get funding oftentimes many times over. You know, think about it this way. It takes a while to get to know somebody, to trust them, and to know that they will take care and steward the funding you gave them responsibly. Right. And it's harder for them to find new people to fund. They're going to want to stick with you. So it's begin. It's really the beginning of a very long-term relationship with the people at that foundation or the program officers at that federal granting agency, whether that's the Department of Education, Department of Energy, Health and Human Services. Um, there's 26 different federal, uh, you know, organizations that give money. So that there's lots of opportunity there. Right now, there's another part to your question. I want to make sure I didn't miss that. I think you answered both because the second part was are funders less likely to renew grant funding? But it sounds like once the trust is developed, that they're actually yes. more likely to renew. Yes, I absolutely. Yep, that's oh. been entirely my experience. So yeah, you you answered both, and you said I have good right. news, bad news, but I heard more good news than bad news. <laughs> awesome. Well, and it, it is out there, and and that's what I want. You know, if there's one thing I want people to leave this call with is is to kind of be excited about doing this because right. it is a fun process, and and there's rewards. I can tell you that you know people who are taking the course now because we launched back in June, they're already getting their grant proposals out and seeing the results. So for their one-time investment in the course they have the opportunity to get $100,000 in a year and they can just repeat that over and over and over and over again. Right. So it's, it's, you know, my mom always said, get your education because you'll never lose it. I'm like, thanks mom. You're right. <laughs> That's why I do this for other people. You'll never lose what you learn. It's so, always there for you. So true. So true. Yeah. Um, and so we're going to jump into Q and a, Great. Everyone that's still with us, do not be shy. Now is the time to get your questions answered. Um, we're going to start with something that Alston asked earlier in the conversation. Alston said, we have a big foundation call tomorrow where we might be asked to submit a grant. Are there any tips on preparing for the meeting ahead of the actual grant proposal? Yes, that's a great topic. Um, Congratulations, first of all, Alston, on having the meeting with the funder because that is golden. It's it's wonderful to be able to get that meeting. Um, I would say the best tips right now are are two things. Be one, be really clear again on your outcome, on what it is you're doing, how and with whom, and your target audience. You want them to be able to picture exactly the end result of their funding. Secondly, be very clear on on the dollars, the numbers. Be clear on how much you're requesting for funding, what your total program budget is, and specifically what you'll be using their dollars for. So those are two kind of very different questions to be prepared for. One is extremely specific about your budget. The second one is also specific, but it's broader in terms of tell them what impact you're going to have in your community. Mm -hmm. I hope that answers your question. And congratulations again. I think that's fantastic. Um, I do have a blog post. You, you can just go to Grants for Good again, click on blog. And if you scroll down, there's an article I wrote about site visits, which this isn't exactly a site visit. It's probably a Zoom call, but it's the next best thing. Yeah. It'll give you some additional tips. But I think with those two, you're going to be doing great. Awesome. Awesome. And Erica actually had a question. She says, hi, Margaret. You have offered so many great tips. I completely right. agree, Erica. I am in search of food nutrition grants offered to for-profit businesses to impact K-12 food security. Any additional suggestions? Um, yeah, I would start with, um, again, downloading that uh, Grants for Good, the, the free guide, the seven steps to grant success. There are some links on there that you can look for uh, researching. Now, for for-profit businesses, and I, I want to be straightforward with you on this, there are far more grants out there for 501c3 nonprofits than there are for businesses. 
That's not to discourage you, but there are far more out there. That's why most of my clients are nonprofits. But for businesses, there's usually two ways you can go about it. You can get a grant directly to your business, or you can help the nonprofit, the K through 12 schools, get grants so that they can hire you to come in and do the food and nutrition services. So it's, it's kind of a backdoor way, but because your K through 12 partner has far more opportunities for grants, you could be written into one of their grants and you would be the contractor or sub awardee who would be paid from the grant funds to deliver your service. And that's a perfectly ethical way of seeking grant funding as well. So it's important to have that partnership, you know, if, if you're gonna go that route. Awesome. Oh, Erica said, I didn't think about that. Um, I'm yeah. glad that you, you got some more insight on that, Erica. Good. Yeah, me too. A lot of people do that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so let's see. Marcia said earlier you mentioned the budget in a grant that you are requesting funds from several funders and you have only applied for one so far. Any tips on what, on what you should put in the box regarding your status of the grant? Should you just write applying? Uh, let me read that question. Let's see. Yeah, so I, I think I know, Marsha, what you're asking. Mm -hmm. um, in almost every grant application, the funder wants to know who else is helping fund this particular project. They usually don't want to be the sole source of funding your program. They don't want to fund 100% of it. So and I talk about this in my all about grant writing course is how do you develop your project budget to show that you are applying to other foundations or government grants and that they might be pending. And I have you write those out specifically and I'll, I'll have you put a note on there. that says grant pending. Okay. So that the funders know that it's under review right now by the, you know, the Ford foundation or whoever it is you applied to. And so you do want to list out who else you applied to for a specific projects so that your funder has some confidence that, hey, there's others jumping on board this ship that's going to be, you know, sailing off and doing great things. Um, the budgets are, are tough. And, and I should mention, too, in the course, if, if you decide to purchase the course today, and again, that um, that discount code is today 100, you'll get $100 off. Um, one of the things I put in the course that people have found really helpful and have told me so is templates. So you might say, well, how do you even develop a project budget? What does it look like? So I have blank templates of typical project budgets and also completed ones that have won grants because I want you to know how to fill those out. And one of the best ways I learn is I need to see examples. What have other people done that has worked? Mm -hmm. um, so that all those things are included um, in there. And, and you'll see that when you get onto the website, what's included in the course. But yes, I, I would recommend doing it that way. Amazing. And I'm looking, I don't think that we have any more questions, but guys, feel free if you have a question to drop it in the chat. Um, while we're waiting a couple seconds to see if there are any more questions, I just want to make, let's see, is that another I, one? Oh no, that's Charlene. Get I did see one about collaboration and partnerships somewhere early on. And um, I do want to address that because that's really important. So many, so many people on the call um, are, are working in nonprofits and you're under a ton of, of time strain, right? You're thinking to yourself, okay, I just saw a grant opportunity. It's due in one week and we haven't even started. So how do we even get partners on board? Mm -hmm. Well, partnerships are extremely important in terms of showing funders that you're not working in a silo and that if you have a business you're working with or another non nonprofit or a school district, that you might have a chance to make a much bigger impact on your target audience. Remember that first piece of homework? I know we dumped a lot on you in this hour, but that homework is, you know, outline your target audience. That's how you get started. Um, no worries that that grant guide that you can download has a lot of these points in it. But yeah, that's that's going to be key is, is having some partners is helpful if it works for your project. Yeah. And I really love this last question that Marsha asks. It says, are there any places you can recommend to look at samples of actual grants written by topic? Well, that's a great question. And, and actually, there are. So there aren't a lot of places, but I can tell you that when you when an organization 
when a nonprofit applies or a business for a federal grant. According to law, if they receive the grant, their application becomes public property. Now, it can be a lot of work trying to track down that application, but what I found is that some of the 26 federal grant making agencies actually will have examples of completed and awarded grant applications. So I'm trying to remember, Marsha, are you from an arts organization? I, I know there was somebody from an arts. I'm gonna use the example of an arts organization. You would go to the National Endowment for the Arts, which is the federal grant making organization for the arts. Go to nea.org and you may find some past samples of funded grant applications. So that's the best way to find them. Now, private foundations are not obligated to share that. So you might wanna contact, if you've got some other organizations that you know and trust that like you, they may share their, their grant proposals with you. Um, also, in, in my course and all about grant writing, I share a number of different organizations. Um, I, I share winning grant proposals from foundation grants, corporate grants, and federal grants. So you have those at your disposal too. Amazing. Yeah, and I definitely wanted to highlight again the three just really areas of opportunity that Margaret has like given us to, to sharpen our skills around grant writing. Number one, there is the free guide at grantsforgood.com and the four is the number four. So grantsforgood.com, that's where you can find her free guide. Um, and then that. also she's offering a discount on her course um, using the discount code TODAY100. You can go to allaboutgrantwriting.com and take a course that Margaret has um, she's just prepared. Margaret has been doing this for 20 plus years. And so the course is amazing. And I definitely um, recommend if you love the conversation today and really want to dive in 110%, go to allaboutgrantwriting.com and use that today 100 discount code. Um, and last but not least, the conversation has been so good in this chat. And if you want to keep the conversation going, definitely visit facebook.com slash groups slash get the grant. Um, because that's where Margaret's um, Facebook group is having a really amazing conversation. And also Wilton just dropped the link. So definitely click that to keep the conversation going. Yeah, I would love to see you all there. You know, it's fun for me to do these kind of these kind of webinars and talks. So I, I'm so thrilled that I met Savitra and that I've met you, Alicia, and that we're doing this. And I just find, you know, I, I want to keep the conversation going. And even if you, you say to yourself, well, I'm never going to become, you know, a, a career grant professional. That's OK. Most of the people in my Facebook group are not intending to do that. They just want to interact with others and get some free tips and insight and ideas on how to go about doing this. So what I've done in the Facebook group is in about a few weeks, I'm going to be running a free webinar that's going to really dive deeper into how to get people ready for grant writing. So I know a lot of people are newbies here. You fall into that category. Um, jump into that Facebook group, get on my email list. You will hear about the webinar. You won't miss it if you're there. And there's gonna be another training coming, um, just a quick one at the end of December mm -hmm. that is gonna be all about recession proofing your nonprofit because 2020 was rough, 2021 is still gonna be pretty tough. So I want to help get people prepared. Um, so I hope I see you in the group. And even more so, I hope I see you in the All About Grant Writing course, because when you do that, you have your own private Facebook group and you get live sessions with me on a regular basis. I'm there to answer all your questions and help you with all those bumps in the road as you're learning this process. Right. And Alicia mentioned it's an eight module course. It can be completed. I designed it so it can be completed one module a week. So if you want to budget eight weeks, you know, to kind of work through each module, uh, you know, on your time off or in your part time, that's great. If you're someone super motivated, you want to get through it much quicker, that's completely doable. Yes. And also don't forget you guys that um, Margaret also dropped her email address in the chat. And so definitely reach out to her with any questions. Um, I don't see any more questions in the chat. Um, is there a way that we can reach you on social media, Margaret? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think the best thing would be is to join that Facebook group, you know, awesome. reach me there. I'll be able to respond to you immediately. I'm also on LinkedIn and on Twitter. Um, I would ask that just the next week, if you email me, leave me your phone number too, because mm -hmm. I'm going to show you, I had a little bit of hand surgery done <laughs> this last week. So I have to type with one finger right now, which as a grant professional is really tough. <laughs> so 
I may be more likely to send you a little video uh, message or phone call, but please don't hesitate to reach out. I love that. I would love to, to talk with you all today or anytime down the road. Awesome. Well, thank you to all of our attendees. Be sure to follow Resilia on social media and also be sure to stay signed up or to get signed up, I should say, for the Resilia newsletter. That way you find out about more conversations like the one we had today. Carrie, I love the comment that you just left. Thank you. I've been in the field for 25 years and still learn great takeaways. That's why we, we have these conversations. Um, and so I just thank you so much to all of our attendees. Be sure to use all of the different resources that Margaret dropped in the chat today. Um, and other than that, I think that is it. Fantastic. I, I'm excited you were all here. I love seeing all your comments. I'm looking at these a little bit as we're talking. And uh, again, I would love to get to know you further and, and really help you make those huge changes for your target audience in your community. So so hang in there. It's It's been a tough year. It will get better. And using revenue from grants is, is just one extra thing you can do to, to make that better. Awesome. Thanks, Alasia. Thanks for having me as a guest today. I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much, Margaret, for joining us. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. All righty. Talk later. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye.